Hello, folks. Thanks for joining us. We're live here with Michaela Many of the University of Saskatchewan. Um, Michaela, feel free to take us away. Thanks. Amazing. Thank you so much, Logan. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. I'm sorry for the delay, um, uh, but I'm here now and I'm super excited to talk to you. Um, I do see some questions already kind of rolling in and Logan has said that he will be monitoring that for me um, and we will have a Q&A session at the end. So a lot of those will be answered near the end, of course. Um, if you are interested in graduate programming, um, this presentation is specifically for undergraduate programming. So if you do have questions about grad school or anything about that, you'll have to go to our booth and talk with one of our representatives as um, this presentation doesn't involve um, those um, programs today. Um, so yeah, if you guys do have a question, please feel free to pop it in. I will pause pre briefly um, in between if there are any questions that can be answered at the time, but then otherwise we'll just kind of leave them for the very end. So um, Really quickly before we begin, uh, I'd like to give a quick land acknowledgement. It's something that we like to do at the beginning of all of our presentations. Um, so the University of Saskatchewan's main campus is situated on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. Um, we like to do these land acknowledgements not to fulfill some sort of obligation, um, but because we believe uh, that education can be a really powerful tool for reconciliation. Um, and we like to um, show our gratitude for being able, being able to complete our work um, in this land. Um, really quickly, if you guys do have any um, questions for us post uh, the event today, um, we do have a couple of different contact resources for you. I will also leave you my email as well, so you can email me with any questions you have. Um, of course, though, if you are looking to speak to admissions directly, their contact is listed here, um, as well as for our University of Saskatchewan Language Centre, which also has some programs um, for our international students who may not meet the English language proficiency requirements, uh, which I will chat about a little bit later in my presentation. Um, so first things first, I do want to share a little bit about our beautiful home that we call, or our Saskatchewan, uh, the beautiful place that we call home. Um, this is where our main campus is situated. Um, we have vibrant cities, uncrowded parks, and world-class freshwater fishing, abundant wildlife, and tons of outdoor activities, including canoeing, hiking, golf, and horseback riding. Um, you really do need to believe it to see it. Um, There's so many beautiful spaces to be discovered here in Saskatchewan. Um, and of course, Saskatoon is the place that we call home. My slide just isn't so itchy. Hopefully it does soon. There we go. Um, so Saskatoon is where we call um, uh, the city that we call home here in Saskatchewan. Um, it is the largest city in the province, so it isn't the capital. That's Regina. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to camp, uh, Saskatoon or been to our campus um, or maybe what brought you there, but um, I'm going to speak a little bit about it really quickly. Um, our population is just over 260,000 people and growing. Uh, we are ranked first in air and water quality um, in Canada by Shadow. Lane Magazine. Um, and we're one of Canada's sunny cities with over 2,300 hours of sunshine annually. Um, we are also known as Canada's Science City because our science programs, facilities, and research are some of the strongest in the country. Um, and we also have one of the lowest costs of living in Canada. So uh, living here is a little going to cost you a little bit less than some of the other major uh, centers within uh, Canada itself. Um, in addition to all of that, we also have a lot of really fantastic activities to be doing across all seasons, um, whether it's spring, summer, fall or winter there's always something going on in Saskatoon for you to enjoy. Um, you can see a few different pictures here on your screen of different things that go on uh, including our Remy Modern Art Gallery which has the world's largest collection of Pablo Picasso's lino cuts which is really cool um, and of course we have a number of different festivals that play, take place all across um, across all seasons um, including the Winter Shines Festival that takes place in Saskatoon typically in January or February um, as well as things like our Pride Festival, our Dragon Boat Festival um, and all uh, so much more. Um, and now to move on to our beautiful main campus, here are a few quick shots um, of our campus looking absolutely beautiful no matter the weather. The weather. Uh, established in 1907, we have a long history of excellence. Our historic main campus is in Saskatoon and is recognized as one of the most beautiful in Canada with plenty of green space, stately greystone buildings and tree-lined walkways. Uh, as you explore this place, you will discover the spaces that define your university experience and we have so many amazing spaces for you to explore. Things like museums and art galleries, libraries, 
libraries, sporting event venues, uh, student hangouts and natural spaces are where life happens here on campus and where your most powerful memories can be created. Um, of course, our beautiful campus features uh, the signature gray stone collegiate Gothic architecture, which you can see um, on the buildings in the top two uh, pictures on the screen. Um, and of course, we do have a lot of new modern facilities that have recently been built, including our Gordon Oaks Red Bear Student Center. That's not pictured here, uh, as well as our health science building, um, again, which aren't pictured here, but they are both beautiful modern buildings that do stray away from that typical architecture uh, style that is really well known for. Um, and now, like I said, our main campus is located in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, but that is not our only campus option. It is not our only location in the province. Uh, we have a number of different locations throughout the province, including partnerships with regional colleges. So um, this is more for our folks who may be um, within the province or may know someone who lives in the province already. Um, if they are looking to perhaps study closer to home uh, or study in a community with uh, family that they know um, or would just like to stay a little closer to home before jumping fully into the university experience, one of these campus options can be really great. In a lot of cases, you can start any program or finish your program um, at one of these campuses, though it does depend on the program, of course. Um, things like engineering you'll need to be on our campus for, but a lot of other programs, especially within the College of Arts and Science, can be completed at one of these colleges or can be at least started at one of these colleges. Um, we have some new enrollment statistics from last year. So we have just over 26,000 students now. We just hit that record and we're really, really excited about it um, as our campus is growing steadily. Um, we have just over 330 or 300, uh, oh my goodness, 3,300 international students, uh, as well as over 300 or 3,300 indigenous students um, and students from over 134 different countries. We are also proud to be a member of the U15 group of top Canadian research universities. Um, and we're actually rated in the top seven in a lot of the areas you see on your screen, uh, including number one in water resources and then the top uh, five, six, seven in a number of these different categories, including things like agricultural science, energy science and engineering, uh, earth sciences, and so many more. One of the other really great opportunities that we have here at USASC is the opportunity to be doing research in your undergraduate uh, education experience. Um, so we have a rule on our campus that one in two students is going to have the opportunity to be doing this hands-on research experience uh, as early as their first year. Um, you'll notice a number of different areas on the screen that have these research opportunities available, but that list is not exhaustive. There are many, many more that um, many other programs that have this kind of research experience available. Um, and that's in addition as well to our co-ops and our internships as well. So um, there's a lot of opportunity to be, get, to be getting hands-on work experience in your field of study on our campus. Campus, um, and it can really help with your job prospects moving forward. Um, I myself did an internship in my program and that's kind of what ended up getting me to where I am today um, as I did do my internship at the university. So really valuable experience um, and not many other uh, universities say or can say that they allow their students to have these kinds of experiences so early on in their degree. So we have two main uh, types of colleges or faculties of study here at USASC. I'm going to quickly talk about our non-direct entry colleges and then I'll go and talk about our direct entry colleges. Um, we have over 160 different programs uh, of study or areas of study within our colleges. First off, starting with our non-direct entry colleges, I did see quite a number of questions about these colleges as well. Um, unfortunately, you're not able to enter these directly out of high school. You do need some post-secondary experience in order to gain admission into a lot of these programs. Um, and the amount that you need is going to be dependent on what program it is. So, for example, our nursing program, you actually only need one year of pre-professional study, as we call it, um, or post-secondary study before you can go into the college. Um, whereas things like medicine, you actually need a full four-year bachelor's degree uh, before you can get in. Uh, like I said, the other colleges do vary. I did see someone ask about vet med. You do actually need two years of post-secondary experience before you can gain admittance into that program. Um, and the other thing you should note is the grade out um, subject area or colleges, so medicine and veterinary medicine, they are not currently accepting international students to their college. Um, so uh, in order to uh, gain admittance into these colleges, one of the uh, requirements is that you are either, either a permanent resident or a Canadian citizen. Uh, now we're going to quickly talk about our direct entry colleges. Um, we have six of them and these colleges you can absolutely enter our programming in uh, directly out of high school. You don't need any additional post-secondary experience to gain admittance. Um, there is one exception in this program or in these programs and I would say that would be in our arts and science college, uh, the fine arts programs. You actually cannot uh, declare your major in uh, a fine art immediately when you apply. Um, those are actually, there's a bit of a different process. You need to be in the College of Arts and Science first 
course, and then you're able to uh, apply into those programs once you kind of get in uh, to um, the college itself. The reason for that is just because with things like drama or fine arts, there are often other components of admission, including things like auditions or portfolios that you would need to complete. Um, and those are done, um, again, during your first year of general arts and science study. Um, we're going to get started and talk really quickly about each of these a little bit more at length. Um, I don't have a ton of time and I, I did, I was running a little bit late, so I might might blow through this information a little bit quicker than I would normally. Um, but of course, we do have our admissions and programs presentations that we give fairly regularly. So if you are hoping for a little bit of more information, um, you are, would be more than welcome to attend one of those as well. Um, so first of all, uh, first off, when talking about our direct entry programs, we're going to talk about the College of Agriculture and Bioresources. A lot of time, a lot of times folks think that, um, you know, cows, crops and farming are kind of the only things that you can really focus on when you're in the College of Agriculture and Bioresources. Um, but that's not true. Um, at USAS, you can actually learn and uh, study a lot of different things aside from crops or farming, though those are both definitely uh, amazing and respectable options. Uh, but we do have other things like agronomy, agribusiness, um, food science and nutrition, um, animal bioscience, which again is a little bit more on the on the farming side of things as well. But um, still a lot of really neat opportunities to study in this in this uh, college. Um, it is one of the fastest growing industries in the world and a big business in Canada. Um, one in every three jobs in the prairies are in this field and one in every seven jobs in Canada is in the agriculture and bioresources field. So a really great college, lots of opportunity and a lot of really great research going on here as well. Next up is the College of Arts and Science. Uh, the College of Arts and Science is one of our largest colleges on campus with uh, over 60 different areas of study. Um, a lot of, uh, we are actually one of the only universities in Canada to, Canada to house our arts and our sciences under the same roof. Um, so that just simply means that you're able to take classes from both the arts side and the science side um, without having to gain any kind of special permission. Uh, the reason we house these, um, on these two fields of study under the same roof um, is because we believe that no student is solely arts or solely sciences. Uh, we like to give students the opportunity to uh, um, um, investigate their interests no matter which side of the arts and science uh, binary they lie on or in between kind of thing. Um, so a really great opportunity there to also make some really neat degree opportunities. So if you're thinking of maybe majoring in something like history and minoring in biology or even vice versa or um, you know coming up with a really other unique degree uh, combination uh, that would absolutely be possible and it allows you to kind of specialize your education just a little bit further. Um, this college is also a really great gateway program or gateway college into our non-direct entry colleges. So if you're hoping to go into nursing or pharmacy or vet med, um, this would be a really great spot for you to gain the prerequisites that you need for your program, uh, study up the on the other admission requirements that you need, and then apply um, while you're in this program. Um, so yeah, this is a really popular gateway as well for students who are hoping to get into one of those uh, other programs as well. Education is our next college that we're going to chat about. Um, the College of Education offers innovative undergraduate and graduate programming through a design, delivery, and support model based on department and unit structures. Um, there are a number of different um, programs that you can get into, um, including um, your early middle years program, which would be elementary school instruction, um, secondary, which would be your high school instruction, um, and a number of combined programs as well, including our combined music and education program, which would certify you to be a music teacher, um, and our combined kinesiology and music program, which would actually allow you to become a phys ed teacher. So um, a couple of cool uh, combo degree programs as well. Um, we do also have some indigenous education programs. Um, you see them listed here on the screen. Um, these are specifically for um, indigenous students who are hoping to teach, um, you know, uh, specifically um, indigenous uh, content um, and through an indigenous uh, lens. Um, so there's a couple different options here as well. Um, next up is our Edwards School of Business. Um, depending on what you're interested in, this could be a really great spot for you because we have a ton of different majors, uh, six to be specific, um, including marketing and finance, uh, as well as accounting, human resources, management, supply chain management, um, all that fun stuff. Um, over 100 years ago, the University of Saskatchewan gave out our first undergraduate accounting degree, making us one of Canada's oldest business schools. And today, the Edwards School of Business, like I said, uh, offers a robust Bachelor of Commerce program with six major options, study abroad options, and a cooperative education program. Um, we are also accredited by the Association to Advance collegiate schools of business. Um, this accreditation actually um, uh, allots us as one, um, in the top 5% of business schools in the world. So if you do choose to end up coming to Edwards School of Business for your business education, you are getting a world-class uh, education. Um, and of course, if you're an ad Indigenous student, you may also be interested in the Aboriginal Business Administration Certificate. Um, 
which allows uh, Aboriginal students to study business at the Edwards School of Business without committing to a four-year uh, degree program. Uh, this is a certificate, so typically it's around two years to complete, um, but there are a flexible um, kind of uh, timelines that you're able to complete that on as well, um, which is could be a really great option for you, again, if you would like to maybe test the waters of uh, studying business before hopping right in. Um, engineering, um, we have one of Canada's oldest engineering schools as well. Um, engineers are problem solvers. They are creative and curious and care about the world around them. Um, a lot of folks think that they may not be engineering uh, the engineering type or engineering material, um, and we urge students to think again, um, as engineers are not all about maths and sciences. Um, there are also a ton of engineers who are into other interests such as entrepreneurship, music, uh, the arts, social justice, um, technology, technological innovation and so much more. Um, typically for engineers, math and sciences are just a means to an end um, and can be um, tools that you use and develop throughout your career. Um, we did recently re-engineer our first year programs. We in introduced some really neat um, uh, new features to our first year program. Um, I'll run you through them really quickly. First of all, they got rid of finals in the first year program. So there are no more finals in your first year. Um, and that's because there is an emphasis on hands-on learning. So instead of writing a math final in a gym with a bunch of other students, um, you'll actually be in a classroom or lab setting, um, developing hands-on skills that are pertinent to engineering, uh, which is, I think, really, really great. Um, the other thing that they did is they gave students the chance to try again on tests and assignments. Um, so if you had a bad day or you didn't get the chance to study for something, you will be able to rewrite it if you don't do well. Um, and that's because they really wanted to make it about demonstrating that you have the skills to confidently move on to the next level um, rather than um, panic and cramming um, your brain full of information just so you can pass a test. Um, for them, it's a lot more about de uh, demonstrating the skills you've developed rather than um, panic studying, which I think is really great. Um, and that's why they allow you to try again, just so that you can um, really work to to clear up any um, any topics uh, or skills that you're struggling with and then um, demonstrate that you're able to move on. Uh, they also introduced modular courses. So um, that means that some courses are quite short, others are quite long, um, but they're always building one upon the other, um, which is really, really great. Um, and then you also have common breaks with your fellow students as well as some additional tutoring sessions at the end of every day. Um, so you're able, you're, you're able to uh, naturally find some study buddies within your program uh, as well as get the help you need uh, in order to feel confident um, and move on. So a lot of really cool features in this new program. Um, this is just the first year that's set up like this. The second, third, and fourth year are uh, much more like a typical university um, experience, um, but uh, a really, really great way to get started in the College of Engineering. Next up, we have the College of Kinesiology. This is our last direct entry college that we're going to talk about. Um, if you don't know what kinesiology it, it is, it is the study of the movement of the body. Um, so if you're really interested in learning how the body moves and how it works, this might be a really great um, uh, degree for you to go into. Um, this is also a really popular pathway program for students who are really interested in medicine or physiotherapy. Um, this is a really great pathway program. Um, this is our most competitive direct entry college. There are only 175 uh, direct entry students being admitted this year and for the next year. Um, and so you can always um, put this as a first or second choice on your application, though we do always encourage students to put the most competitive program that they're interested in first, um, as if you get into your first choice program, we won't consider you for your second choice. Um, so yeah. Um, I am now going to blast through some admission requirements really quickly, so we have some time at the end for questions. Um, we have four main um, requirements. You need to graduate from high school. You need to meet the admission average for your program, which is going to be different depending on which program you're interested in. You need to have the required subjects for your program, as well as any minimum averages in those subjects that are required, um, as well as uh, proof of English language proficiency. When we calculate your admission average, which was one of the components that I just spoke about, we actually use a, a five subject formula. We take one math, one English, and then your best uh, three other acceptable grade 12 subjects with a maximum of two natural sciences, a maximum of two social sciences or humanities, and a maximum of one finer performing art. So we're always looking for your best um, average. We're always going to be taking your best classes that fit this formula to create the best possible average. And this will be used for your admission as well as scholarships. Um, to find the required high school classes that you need for your program, again, they're going to be different depending on the program. Um, 
you're going to need to go to admissions.usas.ca. You can head to the admissions tab, the requirements and deadlines tab. Um, and from there, you'll be able to see, uh, punch in where you've gone to high school, what kind of uh, educational experience you already have. Um, and then the uh, required high school classes for your program will populate um, in terms of your curriculum. So if you say you're from BC, you say you're from Alberta, um, and um, you want the requirements in that curriculum style, um, we will show you that um, using that tool. Um, the other thing is, is if you do end up needing to prove English language proficiency. So if you're an international student, um, uh, actually all students, even domestic students, need to show that they have English language proficiency. Um, that's typically shown with from domestic students a little differently than international students, as international students typically haven't studied at a high school where English is their um, uh, the main uh, language of study, um, whereas for domestic students, typically English is the main language of study. So we can take a look at their educational history and determine that. Um, for our international students who that isn't the case. Um, you can um, prove your English language proficiency by either providing an approved uh, language test. Um, so either like your IELTS, your TOEFL, or even Duolingo has a test now that we accept. Um, your other option is, is if you don't want to take a test or you can't take a test, we do have joint admission to our uh, University of Saskatchewan Language Center. Um, this is for uh, students who are academically qualified for admission, but do not meet the English language proficiency requirement. So let's say you take the test and you don't get a good score or you don't get a score that gains you admission. Um, this this might be an option for you. Um, you do start out taking a light course load. Um, typically, you're going to be taking um, tutorials and workshops with our language center where they give you the skills and the, uh, the skills, the tools, um, and of course, the language knowledge to um, get yourself, um, you know, learning uh, English and um, studying it um, at a level that will help you academically. Um, there are degree programs in all of our direct entry colleges as well. So um, this wouldn't be for if you're going into med or dentistry or anything, you'd be doing one of these programs first anyway. Um, but this is a really great option for our students who may not meet um, that English language proficiency requirement. Now moving on to scholarships really quickly, we have three main scholarships that I want to talk to you about today. Um, the first one is our guaranteed entrance scholarships. Um, you will automatically be considered for these upon applying for admission. You actually don't need to apply for these in any other way aside from applying to come to USASC. Um, your scholarship amount will be based on your highest average. So Another thing you may want to know is if you apply during your grade 12 year when we don't actually have any grade 12 marks to look at, we will actually look at your grade 11 marks as pre-indicators and use those to make a decision. Um, we will calculate your average um, with your grade 11 marks if necessary, as well as your grade 12 semester one marks and your grade 12 final marks after all is said and done and you've graduated. Um, and whichever average is the highest is the one that we'll use for your admission average as well as for your scholarships. Um, like I said, they are going to correspond for the different um, money amounts you see um, up on the screen. So let's say you have a 91 average, you're going to be getting $1,000 directly towards your tuition. So a really great opportunity there for some money uh, towards your tuition. Next up are our best and brightest entrance scholarships. Um, these are USASC's highest valued renewable scholarships, and they're worth up to $40,000. Um, you need to apply for admission to USASC by December 1st uh, in order to be eligible for these. And then you need to submit the scholarship application and supporting information by December 15th. So there are a couple of due dates there that you need to be aware of. Um, but as long as you're applying for admission before December 1st, and you get that scholarship application in by December 15th, um, you will be eligible and can apply for these awards. Our competitive entrance awards are our last awards that we'll talk about. Um, the selection is based on a broad range of criteria. There's a little bit of something for everyone to apply. Some of the criteria is very, very specific. Other criteria is quite uh, broad. Um, so it totally depends on the scholarship. Um, they're uh, worth anywhere from $500 to $32,000. Um, so really great opportunities there to be getting some solid money towards your um, tuition as well. You need to apply for admission to USASC by February 15th and then apply for the awards by March 1st. Um, um, the other thing is, is uh, we really encourage all students to apply for these scholarships. Um, many In many cases, we actually aren't able to give out some of these scholarships because students simply don't apply. Um, they sometimes uh, get it in their head that they um, may not get anything, so it's not really worth applying. Uh, we highly encourage all students to do it because you never know what you're going to get, um, especially if um, a lot of other students aren't applying. So we do strongly encourage students um, to be applying for these awards. Moving on now to residence. Um, some of you, especially if you're living or if you're currently out of province or even out of country, may want to live with us. Um, students in living uh, living in residence at USASC receive continuous support both personally and academically and appreciate the comfort, security, and convenience of living close 
close to classes and university facilities. Um, you are encouraged to apply early. You do not need to have been admitted to USASC in order to um, apply into residence. You just need to have submitted an application. Um, your first option for residence is Voyager Place. Um, these are your typical dormitory style living spaces. There's usually one or two to a room depending on what kind of room you get. Um, and you don't have a kitchen or anything in there. So you do need a meal plan from our Marquis Culinary Center. Um, these um, residences are attached to our other buildings on campus by our tunnels and walkway system. So if you live in Voyager Place, you actually won't need to go outside to get to any of your classes, which is pretty nice, considering it does get pretty cold here in the winter, or it can get pretty cold here in the winter. Um, there's plenty of uh, different um, uh, dorms that you can choose from. Um, there are some co-ed dorms as well, some male only and female only, um, as well as some queer housing as well. So um, a couple of different options for you. Um, and then of course, College Quarter is our other style of residence. Um, these are a little bit different. Um, they are actually apartment style. So there's four people to a unit, but you each get your own private bedroom and you share a bathroom with one other person in your unit. Um, there is a common kitchen and living area. So um, you are able to cook your own meals if you'd like. There is a full kitchen in here. Um, however, you don't have to. You can also get meal plans at Marquis Culinary if that is um, more your style. Um, utilities, internet, cable, TV, and laundry are included in your rental fee. So a lot of the um, components for rent are already included in the fee. Um, so if you do go and take a look at the um, the prices and you see that they are a little bit higher than if you were living off campus, that's why, because most of your um, utilities, pretty much everything is included. Oh, one other thing about College Quarter, um, these are actually located five minutes away from campus, a five minute walk. Um, so they are still rather close to campus. They're um, situated right behind a lot of our other buildings. And um, we have a Williams building that's off campus where the Language Center is, as well as our Griffith Stadium. And College Quarter is kind of tucked in behind both of those. Um, they are a five minute walk, but there is also a large um, or a major bus route that um, kind of goes past where they are. So you could also jump on the bus if you wanted to to get to class. You don't have to walk necessarily. Um, we do also have a lot of other really great student services and supports. Um, these are just a few of them. Um, we have our Aboriginal Student Center, which provides uh, resources um, for other Aboriginal students on campus. Um, uh, they are located in Gordon Oaks, which is a space that is designed for everyone to enjoy, um, though it does um, house the Aboriginal Student Center as well. Um, access and Equity Services is kind of our short-term and long-term disability care. So if if you are someone who is struggling in class for either an academic or a long-term disability reason, um, we can often provide you with um, some accommodations to help with that, including things like note takers or scribes. Um, if you um, can't or, un or are unable to take notes or um, even write your own test, if you have a physical either disability or injury that you're dealing with, um, as well as other dis um, accommodations uh, designed around um, gender identity, um, cultural identity or family status. Um, there's also the International Student Study Abroad Center who helps with kind of um, some immigration um, issues and help with um, admitted international students, um, as well as our study abroad center that provides opportunities for students to uh, go abroad and get um, some credits for their USAS degree at another institution around the world, which is really cool. Um, there's Student Center, which helps with a host of uh, different um, issues that students face. Um, they're also, they also help out with student financing. Um, they have some great help there as well. And in, in general, just if you aren't sure who to go to for help, they can be a really good, strong direction. Um, there are also our career services, which provides um, a ton of different services for our students who are hoping to get a jump start on their career exploration. Um, so whether that's, um, you know, accessing a mock interview or um, a resume or CV help, um, or accessing a workshop for writing a cover letter, um, or even doing a career aptitude test. There are tons of different services you can access that can really help jump start you getting a career that you're really passionate and excited about. And then, of course, we have our Student Wellness Center that provides um, all kinds of uh, physical and mental health care, um, including doctors, massage therapists, physiotherapists, chiropractors, um, psychiatrists, therapists, counselors, um, and more. So if you are a student on campus who's needing either um, physical or um, mental health help, um, the Student Wellness Center is a great place for you to, to go um, as they are there to help students on campus. Um, of course, we also have a lot going on in terms of campus student life. We have 15 campus rec intramural sports. Um, those are our competitive sports teams that aren't the um, varsity teams. So they're not the Huskies, um, but it still gives you the opportunity to compete in your sport, either with a team that you've created or joining as an individual. Um, these are a lot of fun. I myself did curling back when it was still a thing. I don't think they have curling anymore, but um, I did curling once upon a time. and It was such a blast. Uh, in addition to that, if you're more of a student clubs and societies person, we do have over 100 student clubs and societies 
societies. There's basically something for everyone. We have things like the ballroom dancing club, the video game club. There's like a manga and anime club at one point. And of course, if you get to campus and you realize that there is a student club or society missing, or there's something that you would like to join, but it doesn't exist, um, the USSU will actually give you the funds and the means to create one yourself. Um, so you would be able to kind of gather with like-minded folks who are into the same thing as you are, have a full club around it, um, and get to socialize and have some fun with your with your fellow students. Of course, these student clubs and societies are also very specific to other things. There are, um, you know, the English Undergraduate Society, the Saskatoon Psychology Student Society, which are both um, academic area of study societies specifically. So if you're a major or even just interested in those areas of study, you can join one of those. There are plenty of other ones besides those two. Those are just the two examples that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but there is plenty of, of campus um, fun um, to join, to do, um, to be a part of. So um, definitely something to look forward to on the social side of things. Um, now, of course, if you guys are interested in applying for USASC, it is really easy to do. You just have to head to apply.usask.ca. Um, there you can create an account, update your profile, and begin an application. Um, the application process on our website is actually pretty uh, streamlined, in my opinion. It's um, really slick and easy to, to easy to manage. You can save your process, leave, come back to it later, and your application will be saved for you to work on as well. Um, if you are interested, we do have a number of different events that can help you with that application, um, especially if you're struggling to submit or you're unsure about some of the information that we ask of you. Um, some of the events that may be of interest, if you are interested in applying, but the application does seem a bit daunting, um, as applications typically can, um, we do have things like our application workshops, which allow students, uh, we take you through, you join a webinar, um, we take you through the uh, application step by step, um, tell you what kind of information to be expecting, how you would answer the different questions. Not that there's anything super deep on there that we get to um, get you to answer, um, but it can definitely be confusing sometimes if you're unsure. So those can be a great spot to just learn more about our application in the process of filling it out. Um, of course, we do have our chat with USASC events as well. Those are 20 minute one on one virtual appointments with myself or one of my colleagues, um, where we can talk to you one on one about um, any questions you may have about our programs, um, or your application specifically. Um, if you're struggling with it, you can even share your screen and we can help you fill it out if that's what you need. Um, so yeah, you can head to our website, um, the tours and events, um, tab on our admissions website is where you're going to want to go to access all of these fun events um, and you can register for those there as well. Um, we also have things like our USASC Express, which is kind of an admissions and programs information session, kind of like the one we have going on today, um, and an application workshop put together into one. It is a longer session, but it does deal with both. So we can kind of help you give, give, uh, help give you a better idea of what you may be able to study when you come to USASC, um, as well as show you uh, the process to getting um, admitted as well. And then of course we do have a scholarships and information session, which um, might be of interest to you, where we kind of go through some of the scholarships and some of the scholarship options a little bit more in depth than we do here today. Um, of course, really quickly, I do have some important dates that I want to share with you all um, as with there are academic um, deadlines for admission. Um, so December 1st, like I said um, earlier, this is the deadline to apply for admission if you're you want to be eligible for our best and brightest entrance scholarships. And of course, that application is due the 15th. Um, deadline to apply for early admission to kinesiology and Bachelor of Education is December 1st. So if you're interested in applying early for those programs, um, you'll need to apply by December 1st. Um, February 15th is another um, big deadline. Um, that's the deadline to apply apply for the competitive entrance awards. That scholarship application is due March 1st. Um, and of course, February 15th is also the deadline to apply for admission to kinesiology, Bachelor of Education, combined Bachelor of Science in kinesiology, um, and Bachelor of Education program. Um, so a couple of different programs for regular admission there as well. Um, I do see I'm missing our May 1st slide, but May 1st is another one of our important dates that we have. Um, May 1st is an important date because it's the deadline for regular admission to our programs like um, Edwards School of Business, Engineering, uh, Agriculture, and Bio resources, um, as well as the international deadline for arts and science. Um, so if you are an international student and you are considering applying to arts and science, May 1st would be your last day to do that as well. Um, and then, of course, August 15th is actually our last day for uh, domestic students to apply into um, the College of Arts and Science as well. Um, all of these important dates and deadlines can be found on our admissions website if you go um, to that tab that I mentioned before um, and use that tool that I brought up about um, what kind of academic history you have and where you took your high school, um, that tool will prompt um, all of those uh, requirements and uh, deadlines in uh, your curriculum. 
Uh, so once again, uh, here is uh, the contact information for us. Um, I am going to, uh, once I kind of close out this slideshow, I'm going to pop my email address um, into our chat as well. So you can have that and you can email me if you have any questions. Um, the other thing I will say really, really quickly is that we have our USASC Future Students Inst Instagram account. It is in the lower um, uh, part of the right part of your screen. So that QR code that looks kind of like an Instagram icon at the bottom, um, that is our USASC Future Students Instagram account. It also, um, on that account, we share a lot of really great information, um, including reminders for deadlines, um, as well as we host some live sessions um, that discuss our admissions and programs, our scholarships, um, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so if you are interested, um, please go ahead and feel free to give that a follow. It's got some great information for you as a student and can um, be a really great reminder as well. Um, okay, so I am going to stop sharing now. Uh, as that is the end of the presentation, I really, really appreciate you all being here. I don't know if I can send something in the chat. I'm not, or this is a Q&A, sorry. Um, so I'm going to try put my address into the chat. Hopefully that works. Thanks, Michaela. Sorry, uh, just put it in oh, the, in the public um, chat. Uh, no yeah, problem. so, and I also noticed we only have about five minutes left, but were there any questions that um, popped up? I noticed we have quite a few, but... There are quite a few, and the five minutes is um, a bit of an overstatement also. Uh, we have yeah. just about one minute or so, and I'm hesitant okay. to privilege any of these. A lot of them are pretty specific. Uh, I would yeah. encourage folks to visit you at your booth uh, or send yeah, you an email. Yeah, what, what should students do to get some answers? Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. So yeah, if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to visit our booth. Um, that's why we're there. Of course, if you do want, you can also email myself. Um, I wouldn't email admissions with questions about campus life or anything. They probably won't have um, the time to answer them. They'll probably just get forwarded to me anyway. Um, so if you do have questions about those kinds of things, you can pop by our booth or email me and I'm happy to answer. Thanks so much for your time, Michaela. I really appreciate the presentation. Of course. Thank you for having me and um, hope to see you folks at our booth in a little bit here. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye.